So I welcome you to a secret of the pros. Now this pitch based fitness session, it revolves around things I learned when I was at Celtic when Brendan Rodgers was the manager. He came in with his background staff, sports scientists, medical team, and they designed this way of training. They really liked strength, resistance and speed. So that is the reason why I shape up the sessions like this and it's the reason why you should also shape up your pitch based fitness sessions like this. We're going to look at what you can do on the football pitch to make yourself the fittest player in your team. What's up and welcome to the Footballers Physical Checklist Playlist. Now this is number one in a series of six videos where I'm going to show you how to get the best physical shape of your life as a football player and athlete. Now this is video one and we're going to cover pitch based fitness and everything in this first episode and the rest of the series it's things that I've done and things that have worked for me over the years playing for Celtic, Dundee United, Dumbarton, Airdrie and the Scotland international youth teams. And over the years I've built up a catalogue of drills, exercises, movements, things that work and I've put them into what has become the football players checklist. So today we are going to cover pitch based fitness and I'm going to tell you all about it and how we can create the perfect session for you the football player and athlete. But before I do that I'm going to give you a little bit of the educational side of why you need to be doing these things on the pitch. So if you want to stay for that, stay here. If you don't, you can skip the video. I'm going to put the timestamps below in the description so you should be able to click on them and it will take you right to the bit that you want to focus on. So the beauty of this, the beauty of the football players checklist is that yes, of course, it's for football players. It's for football players who I believe are athletes, right? If you're a football player, you're an athlete. But not only is it for football players and athletes, it's for the every man, the every woman. Now, the types of training that you're going to find today in this video and in the rest of the videos are going to make you lean, they're going to make you strong, they're going to make you fat, they're going to make you fat, they're going to make you fast, they're going to make you fit, they're going to make you powerful, they're going to make you explosive, they're going to make you essentially a finely tuned athlete. And who doesn't want to be in that sort of shape? To me that is the kind of shape that I want to maintain even if I wasn't playing football. So if you do the things that I'm going to explain to you, I can guarantee you and promise you, you will be the fittest player in your team and you'll be in the best shape of your life. But the caveat is it takes hard work. Okay, so you may be wondering what is the football player's checklist? What is going to be coming in this playlist in this series? First up, we have pitch based fitness, which we're going to do today. Next up, we have gym based fitness, which we're going to do next week. We then have nutrition, we then have mobility, we then have prehab and we have recovery. So six things six most important things you need to be doing and covering and concentrating on and focusing on as an athlete, as a football player. And these are all physical attributes. Obviously there's other aspects to your game like the mental side, but these are the physical aspects within this playlist. And by the end of this six weeks, you're gonna be an expert on everything that you need to be doing physically as a football player. Okay, so today what are we gonna be doing? We're gonna be focusing on pitch-based fitness. Within pitch-based fitness, you have fitness without the ball, you have fitness with the ball, and you also have technical. Those are the three key aspects to pitch-based fitness. And within pitch-based fitness, with and without the ball, you need to focus on strength, resistance, and speed. Now, what do I mean by strength, resistance, and speed? So strength is, imagine you have the ball and you lose it. You have to quickly change direction, get it back, and then again, you might have to change direction. So this is the repeated change of direction. It's gonna burn the quad. Resistance is typically your slightly longer duration moments of endurance. So for example, if you're a fullback, the minute you overlap and get up the pitch, and then you have to get back in to defend. And lastly, we have speed. So speed is when you sprint. Maybe you make a last minute run into the box. Maybe you have to recover if you're a defender and get back and chase an attacking player. So it's really important once you understand those three things, it's time to start planning your sessions. And planning your sessions will actually become easier because you have categories that you know you need to create sessions from. Sometimes players want to do too much, but always remember less is sometimes better. So there's two ways you can write down your session. I like to use a notepad or a bit of paper. Sometimes I'll use my phone, but it's really important to head down with a plan so you can turn up, get your boots on, smash the training session with intensity, leave and get back up the road rather than it dragging on for ages and ages and you're trying to think on the spot of what to do in the training session. So before we go and hit the pitch for the training session, I wanted to tell you one more thing. I wanted to tell you how you can structure your training week when it comes to pitch-based fitness. Everyone will have different ways in terms of what their team training is, what their individual training is, what their work schedule is like, what their school schedule is like. But this is the general rule of thumb. Whatever day your game is on, you want to kind of preload and do most of the work at the beginning of the week. All right, so you don't want to be doing a big session two days before or a day before your game. Sometimes it will happen, which is fine, but you have to manage yourself and be smart about it. The day before the game, make sure it's recovery based, it's light, it's maybe some technical stuff, no pitch based fitness. But this is an example week. I'm basing it around a player who plays a game on a Saturday, 
team trains on a Tuesday and team trains on a Thursday. So this is what it would look like. On Monday, it's a possibility that you do your own pitch-based session like the one I'm gonna show you today. On Tuesday, you do your team training. Wednesday is another day that you possibly could do your pitch-based session. Thursday's team training, Friday's light, Saturday's game day, Sunday's recovery. So that is how your typical week should look when it's pitch-based sessions. In terms of how much you should be doing, Two team training sessions a week plus a game on a Saturday is pretty good. If you can manage to add in one more pitch base session, that'll put you in really good condition and it'll probably put you above most of your peers, most of the op opponents you play against and most of your teammates in terms of how much you're doing. All right, that's enough of the chat. It's time to hit the pitch session. Let's go. Okay, so first things first, before we go into the training session itself, we have to do a warm up. I'm going to tell you how to create the perfect warm up before you go into your training session. Stop injuries, stop muscle soreness, the warm-up should be made up of four parts. You want to increase your heart rate, you want to loosen your joints, you want to loosen up your muscles and warm them up, and you want to do some technical training. So I like to begin with a jog around the pitch to increase my heart rate. Once I've done this, then I move on to some dynamic and static stretches, working the full body. So I stretch my joints, I also stretch my muscles during this. Some of them on the move, some of them standing still. And finally, before I go into the session, I finally slowly build up some of the movements I'll be executing in the session. So I'll be doing strength, resistance and speed. So I'll do a couple of 50 to 60% attempts at movements that I'll be doing in the session. So you have your session plan, you're warmed up, focus on intensity and quality in the training session. Are you ready? Let's go. So the first part of my session is gonna be technical. The first part of your session should be technical. So using my session plan, I'll set up some cones and do dribbling and proceed to do variations of the movement. I'll spend around 10 minutes. And the reason I'm doing technical stuff at the start is because I'm fresh, so the quality will be good. It's also a bit of an extended warm up as well. So I usually tend to break it down. I do one extra set on my weaker foot. The technical stuff can be creative, you can be adventurous, you can mess about. It's all about getting comfortable and getting a good feel for the ball. It doesn't have to be complex, complicated movements. It has to be simple and effective. For the strength part of the session, Again, we need minimal equipment. I'm using cones and a football. For this one, the focus is real intensity to replicate a game-like scenario. So we're gonna do some sets without the ball, and we're gonna do some sets with the ball. You have to work as hard as you can for it to replicate a game situation for the required time. First up, I'm gonna do a jockey movement. I'm gonna do 10 reps and rest for 90 seconds. So one rep is up and back. This is really tough. You're gonna feel the quads burning. Once you've done one set of 10, you're going to rest for 90 seconds and repeat three times without the football. After this, we're going to move on to with the ball work. You're going to be shifting the ball eight yards left to right side, leaving it and then returning it back again. You're going to do six reps here, rest for 90 seconds and repeat times three. Now these strength movements will replicate a change of direction in a game and really build up the strength in the legs. After that, it's time to move on to resistance, the bigger areas, the bigger distances, the longer durations of your session. So it's game specific, so think as a player where you'll be playing on the pitch and what sort of movements you'll, com you'll commonly do. So put those types of movements in your session. I'm a fullback, so I'm going to be doing 10 seconds on, 20 seconds rest across the pitch, which will replicate an overlap or a recovery run or an attacking run. I'm going to do 8 reps and rest for 60 seconds after I've done those eight, and I'm gonna repeat those three times. That is without the ball. For with the ball, resistance running, I'm gonna do some crosses. I'll do five reps. I'm gonna rest for 60 seconds in between reps and do three sets, so 15 crosses in total. With resistance complete, it's time to move on to the final part of the session, which is speed. For speed, it's really important that you do maximal effort. This is gonna be your sprint, and you do this in the game regularly. You need to be conditioned because it's a different energy system to the resistance and strength work. So you're gonna put max intensity in. You don't have to go straight into max speed for the first rep, you wanna build up to it. And I'm gonna do one set of six reps from six yard line to halfway. I'm gonna sprint as fast as I can without the ball. And my rest period is from when I hit the halfway line I'm going to slow down, walk to the opposite side of the pitch, spin, and when I hit the six yard line again at the other side of the pitch, I'm going to sprint from there to the halfway and repeat. You're basically going to do three on each half of the pitch. After a set of six, I'm going to rest for two minutes and then I repeat the exact same movement, but this time with the ball. After speed, I like to do another bit of technical work. Almost acts as a bit of a cool down as well. And today I'm going to spend five minutes doing keepy ups. 
TPRPs are very basic, you might laugh, you might overlook these, but again it gives you a really good feel for the ball. You can work on both feet, inside of the foot, outside of the foot, laces, thigh, chest, head. Now remember there are a range of technical drills that you can be doing as a player and you have to think about what you need most. Is it repetition of crossing, shooting, 1v1s, heading? It's very specific to your position and what weaknesses you have. Alright guys, session is finished. Your first pitch based football fitness session ticked off in the checklist. Anytime you come to plan a pitch based session, think about those things, strength, resistance, speed. And honestly, when you start doing this, when you start implementing this routine into your training schedule, you'll feel unbelievable. Hope you enjoyed the first video in the footballer's physical checklist. This is the first. The next video is gonna contain gym-based fitness. So keep your eyes peeled. If you're not sure what to do in the gym for your lower body, upper body, core, this video is gonna be for you. If you have any questions about this video, put them in the comment section below. Don't forget, like and subscribe, please. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.